Hey everyone, how we doing? I've had a few people ask me over the, uh, the last few months, how do I put a tiger edge on a blade? Now this tops is one that I did a, um, a knife swap for uh, over a week ago. And um, I was mainly after the other things in the deal because I mean, I've got enough knives, right? But this one, I'm not gonna mention names because he's a nice bloke, but really, Look at the pitting that somebody put on this by trying to strip it and force patina it. The, the holes in this blade are just, it's fornicated, okay? Completely fornicated. I'm being polite because it could be kids watching. So, what I'm trying to do is just put a tiger edge on this and the way I do this as a lot of you have asked, I use one of these diamond stones. Okay, now this one has four sides, four grits. The way I do it is I put the knife flat with the, not the back flat, I'm trying to do this opposite so you can see. Um, you've got the blade here which is flat on the, the uh, stone, right? So if you put the blade flat, you'll see that it just lifts it up enough. So we're not flat on the, the edge, uh, on the blade, we're flat on the edge. So from there, you wanna lift it up just a bee's dick. Now, you can barely see how much that gets lifted. It's only the tiniest little bit to lift it up. So then you're gonna use a cutting motion. So when you've got your edge down, you lift it up just that little bit, and then you are gonna swipe. Swipe it across your blade. Now everyone says you've got to do whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. That's not necessarily true. You will do it by feeling the blade and looking at your edge. Now this is, I've been working on this edge for the last oh, probably half to three quarters of an hour trying to get out that V edge. Now everyone, not everyone, sorry, I've got to stop saying that. But a lot of knife makers will say the V edge is your secondary edge so that when that runs out, you still have the edge of your knife. No, 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 no. When the V's gone, your knife is pretty much useless on a lot of things. I don't like a V edge on a blade. I never have and never will. It's just me, personal preference. More knives have been around for thousands of years. And, well, it seems that way been around for eons and they don't put a v-edge on their blades if they have i haven't found one yet there's no need i prefer a blade to just cut in but as i said that's my personal preference so i'll show you guys what i've been up to with this stone now i just keep a little vice here on the side of the coffee table now this stone has your grits which is a 200, 300, 400, and a 600 grit. So you have your 200, 300, 400, and 600. I start off with the, the really heavy duty white till I can get the edge that I want. Then I'll change it across to the yellow. You don't really have to go to the yellow. I'll just put you down here for a second. Okay. You don't really have to go to the yellow if you've done a good enough job on your white. Now, I'm just going to finish this off by half a dozen swipes on each side. Now, over the years, you will learn where that edge is. And you'll also learn it by sound as well as by feel. If it's going nice and smooth, then you're on the right edge. If you have lifted up just that little bit too much and you can hear it grinding, then you're taking away too much steel. You can't put this stuff back once it's gone. It's just not worth it. I can sit here and watch TV while I'm doing this because I just know by feel where this stone is supposed to be. Now looking at the edge, Oh, 
I think I've got that pretty much where I want. The easiest way I check when I get to this point is by running it across the fingernail. Now it's as rough as guts all the way across, right up to the tip. So I know that I now have that flat edge that I want. When you go down through the grits, what I'm essentially doing is not taking any more meat off the blade, I'm just polishing it up now. Getting out the gouges that the, the heavy stuff has left on the edge. So, and that feels like there's absolutely no resistance there at all, which is what you want. The problem with this knife, when I was sharpening it and I got to the tip, it took me forever to get an edge on the tip of this thing. And the reason that it took forever, I don't think it was ground properly from the start. And some companies will do that. They're mass producing. You can't always get that perfect edge that you want. So I can feel that's as smooth as can be. And looking at it, I'm pretty much going over the whole grind that I've put there previously, which is good. So I'll just keep going on this for a little bit more until I can know for sure that I've actually done this um, and done it properly. Then what I'll do is take it outside and we'll hit it on the buffing wheel. I like to get the edge as smooth as can possibly be, for me anyway. And yeah, I'm applying pressure with my right hand downwards on the blade. It's, at the moment, I'm still trying to get those little tiny um, bits out of the, the edge. So I'm still applying that little bit of pressure to get my, oh, look at the holes in this thing. Uh, it's not really showing them up too well. But yeah, you can see here near my thumb, there's some pitting really bad i was hoping to try and get all of this out so that i could put the edge back to the way it was but you can see there it's a huge canyon through the steel i think he said that he he used some boiled um boiling vinegar like i understand a lot of my brethren in the states all like to strip blades and horse patina them and things like that i've Personally, I've never understood it. A lot of coatings will protect your knife, which is what you want. Stop that little bit of rust. If you need to strike a ferro rod, take a little bit of the coating off the back. You don't have to take all the coating off, just a little tiny bit for where you want to use this, the uh, ferro rod. Okay, so I think I've got this pretty much where I want it now. So I'm going to change it to the red, which is the last one. Oh look, you know, I was dumb enough to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on a Ken Onion workshop. I rarely use it because I'm doing exactly the same as what the workshop does. Yeah, the workshop might do it in a hundredth of the time, but you're also going a lot quicker and there's more margin for errors when you're trying to get just that right shape. You, you want to keep the tip the way it is. If you're not doing it properly and you're using a workshop, before you realize it, you've rounded your tip off. I don't mind doing that to an edge. Uh, sometimes my knives, I do it on purpose round the tip off because some knives I like to have a what I would class as a scalpel tip so that if I need to cut myself to get a splinter out or something like that, at least you know that the tip that you've put on that knife will do the job. 
Now I can feel this is like just running it over glass at the moment. So I know that I'm pretty well polishing out all the bits and pieces I wanted. Looking at that edge is great. You guys should be able to see that the V is gone. And it's almost, it's almost going flat straight down the grind here. But not 100% flat. I like to lift it up just, as I said, just a bee's dick. And that will take out the V edge quicker. Otherwise, by the time you get rid of that V edge, your blade is going to be a lot thinner just in this section. And I, I try to keep that little bit of meat there because uh, it just depends on what you're going to do with a knife. This one is a great size for an EDC. Um, I'm going to use this as a bit of a house basher. Just things that I want to do around here in the backyard. And if I'm going to start a fire, then I'll be using this. Now the other thing that I'll be doing is the spine. So... I will be just rocking it backwards and forwards dead on the spine so that I can get that 90 degree because I've checked it and this thing will not strike a rod and as we all know I'm a fire bug so all right so I'll just give this another half a dozen okay That should do it. That looks fine to me. That feels good. I'll just give it a wipe over. Now, we're going to take it outside to the buffing wheel. So, here we go. Come for a walk. Alright. So, we go out here to the buffing wheel. Oop. Now, I told you guys, um, oh geez, it had be going back a, a month or so now, that Aldi had their bench grinders on sale. The bench grinder is something that I brought and put buffing wheels on. Take the grinding blades off, put buffing wheels on, and it's fantastic. It really is. Um, I'll do this from the back because one or two people have said, oh, you've got to do it from the back. I only did it from the front um, because that's just the way I felt comfortable. The grinding wheel or the buffing wheel I should say is just mounted on the floor at the moment. So I kneel down, just put my toes on it to stop it from buzz across the floor. And I've got an anvil behind it so the magnet on the back of my phone will show me what we're doing. So I'm just going to place you guys down gently here where the, oh, there's a hand, where the buffing wheel is. There we go. And doing it this way, I'm actually standing here behind you and you're not getting a full crutch shot. So, foot on. Using the coarse wheel to start with, I use the brown wax, rouge, whatever you want to call it. And then on the fine buffing wheel, I use the white. And that takes out any of the last bits, uh, the impurities, and it's fantastic. So, let's turn this on. Alright. As I said, I'm doing it the wrong way now. I'm just used to being over this side. But, it's, uh, it's also a safety thing. If I'm going to be doing this and there's kids watching, I want them to know the right way of doing it as well. There's no point in doing something and finding out later that a kid's lost his finger because he wasn't doing it right. I'm not being really smart here by having my foot down here, um, but if I chop it off, it's my foot. And I'm prepared for that. But going here at the top, there's a less chance than what it would be if I was down here at the front. This also takes me a bit to get used to now because I'm not used to this side. 
you're using exactly the same angle that you did on your uh, block which is just nice almost flat as I said almost flat lift it up a little bit and that way you're polishing the whole surface of where you've um, you've done your edge now with this I usually do um, three three or two two whichever it's different to when I do the actual grinding of it I try to do this as even as possible that's not to say that when I look at it later it's like ah yeah I've got more to do on this side this will also tell me whether or not I've got the entire edge that I needed ground off as well blade off before I put it onto the other wheel. The reason I do that is it stops putting the brown wax onto the white wax wheel. Looking at this grind that I've done, and it's probably not going to be easy for you guys to see it, but um, here at the very tip, right about there, I need to grind back just a half a bee's dick. On this side it looks okay, the other side, no. So, I will finish that off inside. But I'll just show you guys. Now this sort of works. Actually, um, Jace, you went out and grabbed one of the wheels, the buffers, and everything that I showed you in the past. Let me know what you guys think of it. So I've got the edge now to where I want it, it's nicely polished and I can turn that off. Alright now I'm not a usually a big fan of shaving hairs and that sort of stuff because it takes too long to grow back. But I'll give you guys a rough idea, I normally shave around the tattoo but you can see that just went straight down and the hair is off there's no need to scrape like that to see if it's uh, sharp if you can't get the hair off like that in one swift movement hairy blade then it's still not sharp enough but I'm quite happy that this is a tiger edge now as usual tip test tip test works it's quite a good tip test actually that's yeah okay yeah so just touching your skin with the tip if it uh, if it bleeds you know you've done a pretty good chance and I would rather do that than have a bald leg <laughs> yeah that that was a good tip test okay so I hope that um, I hope that helps some of you guys that have asked me about it and uh, any questions feel free to yell out as I said this is just the way that I do it there's a thousand different ways that you can sharpen a knife 
I just find this is easier. Um, I have the workshop in the shed. As I said, I I just find that it's um, uh, it's just it's not the same for me. I think most of you have all asked in the past. Uh, my grandfather was a butcher, my father was a chef, and I've just been collecting since I was eight. So for the last 41 years, I've been playing with knives, and you can see the tip test was really good. I'm stoked with the edge that I've got on this thing now. So, all right, you guys take it easy, and I'll see you on the next review.